Okay, welcome to the shop. So in this video, we're repairing a 1903 Springfield rifle stock. Uh, we're just gonna jump right into this. So right here, I'm setting up kind of a way to open up a crack. So this, this stock has a crack right behind uh, the receiver of the gun. And uh, you can see there how that, you kind of get a good shot of that crack there as I kind of clamp it down, use that foam pad underneath to kind of give it a point to leverage against. Gotta be careful here not to obviously do too much because we don't want to completely break the thing, but we want to open it up so we can get some glue in here. Put a little blue tape on there just to help protect it. This thing has a really nice patina. This is an old rifle built in 1918. I think that's what the owner told me. So I don't want to put any effect on the patina and all the use and scratches of it. I just want to repair it, make it shootable. So tape it off to keep some epoxy off of it. That is some sawdust there uh, that I'm mixing into some total boat epoxy. Uh, this is some great, a great product here uh, that this is actually a penetrating epoxy. So it's super thin. It, it can work its way down inside this crack. We, we need to get this glue as far down in there as we can uh, to really get a good bond and really glue it back together well. I'm using a straw here to kind of work it into that crack. And then I'll come in with uh, my little compressed air gun and, and just carefully shoot some air at it. And that helps push it down in there as well. Eventually I started seeing that epoxy come through on the inside of the stock. So definitely worked it in there pretty deep, which is exactly what I want. I want to say that I do not do this professionally. I just really enjoy fixing gun stocks. I'm a furniture maker by trade. So um, any critique you have of this, you know, I'm not, I'm not a professional. I just do the best I can. I have done one of these before. Um, I'll link that video in the description. I'm going to pull the clamp pressure off here. Uh, so you'll see that epoxy come right out once that stock goes back to its normal position. So clean that up. I've got a rubber band here. This is actually uh, uh, some slingshot bands that I've ordered online when I was making some slingshot for my kids. So I just found these and wrapped it around really tight. That'll put the clamp pressure to pull that crack closed and uh, just clamp that off and we'll let it sit overnight. Like I was saying though, I, I have repaired one of these before and, and I, I did it in a YouTube video and uh, that one was completely broken in half. The owner of that one had no plans of shooting it. I did not reinforce that particular stock. Got a lot of heat for that. Um, I do believe that this epoxy is very, very strong and it could, could probably hold uh, a rifle stock and make it safe to shoot. But this video, we're gonna put some reinforcement in it just to really make sure that this thing is fully safe to shoot because this guy intends to shoot it and deer hunt with it. So once we get these bands off, we want to try to remove any epoxy left. I've got a card scraper here. This thing works great. It just really controlled light cuts. Uh, like I said earlier, I don't want to remove any patina off of this. I want to try to keep it as original as possible. It's hard to do that. There's going to be a little bit coming off, but for the most part, I'm just trying to uh, scrape that glue line and get the, the squeeze out of epoxy off of it. Wipe it down with a little mixture of denatured alcohol and water. Clean everything off. It's not easy to tell, but you can see that crack is, is pretty much secured up and um, filled with epoxy. Give it the old test, make sure it looks solid. Um, it's hard not to appreciate this particular stock. It's just got a lot of character. You can tell it's been used and used well. So it's, got, it's definitely got a story to it. And I'm glad that I can be a part of that story and, and getting it fixed up so it can shoot again. Here we are starting the process of pinning this, this crack, reinforcing it. I'm drilling it out. This is gonna be a quarter inch brass screw we're gonna put in here. And so we're gonna drill out a 64th of an inch smaller hole real tricky here because the, I struggled with knowing what angle to take this rod, how to go. Uh, my my uh, decision ended up being to angle it in. So you can see I'm kind of working this insert of this drill bit up and then we're going to go down towards the, the pistol grip of the stock. We're trying to get as much of that screw down through this crack and into the, the meat of the stock as we can just to keep it strong. Uh, Got to be careful here. I don't want to come out the other side. You're going to see some smoke start to pop out the other side of the stock and I just barely, barely clipped through the end of that. You won't be able to see it when it's all done, but um, I went as far as I could, that's for sure. 
There's that smoke. So the great thing about using the threaded rod, I think, is you can thread it in there, um, and it's once you glue it in epoxy, it, it's secured in there and it's solid. Um, I, I, I read a lot in forums about how people do this. You, you can use just brass um, stock as well, just a brass rod. Um, but I decided that using this machine screw was 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 a pretty cool way to do it. I'm putting some epoxy on it right now. I'm gonna get those threads loaded and then we're gonna thread it down in there. A little bit nervous here on this part. Um, you know, obviously we don't want to create more damage, but it worked out really well. Uh, just taking it real easy with the drill. And then the last little bit I'm gonna get by hand with the screwdriver. It's just the epoxy dripping out. Got to make sure I get, get all that cleaned off. So you'll notice in this shot right there where my index finger was, there's some epoxy dripping out of that little bit we cut through. Um, so you know I've gone all the way through there. Once that epoxy sets, come back with my Dremel and just cut that bolt off. And then it's a bunch of work with the file to file it, carefully file it down. Like I said, I'm not a professional at this. I really do enjoy. Uh, I've carved a few stocks, a few of my own personal ones. Occasionally I'll fix them. I have a lot of people ask me, they'll send emails. I don't, I don't take, take it on too often because I have to have respect for their, you know, there's a whole niche craft of stock repair and stock making. And, um, you know, I'm definitely an amateur when it comes to that. So occasionally I'll take one on and I feel like it can do and it's fun and I enjoy it. Uh, but I like to put the disclaimer in that it is not something that I am um, it, deeply trained at. I just kind of tap into my furniture skills and um, do the best I can. No, I'll turn that on, buddy. That's a multi tool for a little Dremel. Oh. Well, that hurts you so bad. It could hurt you, definitely. I need a smaller file. So it's always a good idea here when you're working real close to that stock to just tape it off. So the file's gonna, you know, it's gonna build up three or four layers of tape and give that file something to hit as opposed to me making the mistake of actually filing away uh, that beautiful patina on this stock. Well, I guess the one downside maybe to using a threaded rod is you kind of see those threads here. I think it's subjective on whether that's good or bad. I don't, I don't really mind it. The client didn't mind it at all. Um, he understood the, the function of it. Um, so, it, you know, the brass rod, you wouldn't get that. But also, you know, with, with the threads, you get that epoxy in there and everything's locked in place. So I switch to a smaller file. I'm going to pull out a saw file for sharpening um, hand saws here soon just because it's even smaller and I can really work close to it without uh, doing too much damage to the stock. So that's as far as I'm going to take this. I, I'll finish following it down. You can see that tape really came in use there, kind of tore it up. And uh, we'll, we'll pull that tape off and, and you know, I'll throw some Renaissance wax on it and hand it back over. I don't, I don't need to do a bunch of fancy finish work or anything on this. Uh, the goal was just to, to get that rod in there and not, not affect anything original with the stock. Be sure to shoot me a comment. Let me know your thoughts on this repair. I always appreciate um, the input, good and bad. I can handle it. And I um, appreciate you tuning in. I'm going to leave the, the video with some photos of the finished uh, stock. And then uh, I have my youngest in the shop. He is the man of many questions, and he loves damage. guns. So uh, we had a great discussion at the end of this video about this gun and, you know, about life. So appreciate you guys tuning in. Leave me a comment, and uh, we'll see you next time. Yeah, but tape is sticky, right? It is sticky, but yeah. Guys, Marsha does. I like marshmallows. Those are sticky. I think marshmallows are sticky. Yeah. Dad, we named a chicken marshmallow.
Marcelo and my name Marcelo. That's the same way. Clean it up a little bit, and we're we're, fi we're fixing it. So I had a crack in it. And we glued the crack back, and then you see this thing right here? Yeah. That's a little brass bolt that we drove through there to reinforce the crack. So now, when you shoot it, it'll be safe to shoot. I used to shoot that when I was a big kid. This gun here, Jetty, was made back in the early 1900s. This is a very old gun. Oh. See, it has a turkey inlay in it. Man used it to do turkey hunting, but this gun here fought in wars, probably. It's got a lot of history to it, the old Springfield. Are you my friend in those guns? I'll put it back in my gun safe so it's in a safe spot, yeah. Okay. That's a good place, but you don't want to do that. No, well, it's not mine. It belongs to an, another person. I'm just, he's paying me to fix it. That's how things work, buddy. It's called working. People pay you for your skills. I think he likes to fix that, but so, I will. It's very important in life that you learn a skill, bud. A tangible skill. Something with your hands. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Don't learn about computers because it all changes too much. Learn how to build something or make something. Dad, but do you want to be a welder? Dad? Yeah? But do you remember we poured water on, on Taper's house and we um, get over there? Do you get that water and pour and pour on and, and go over there to clean it? Do you? I don't remember. What were we cleaning? Well, I do. Sorry, buddy. I don't remember that. Okay. I ran to the shoe with those guns. Was I like them. Guns are powerful. They are, buddy, but they're also very dangerous. You can't shoot them yet. You gotta learn how to shoot them first. Yeah. I'd like to shoot this one. What? I'd like to shoot this one. I like to shoot the iron one. You know, this thing's got a lot of character. It's been used. I love that about it. But I like to shoot those iron ones. Buddy, you've never shot a gun. Mm, well. Hmm. That boy, you can show a Nerf gun. Yeah, you have shot Nerf guns. And I saw a um, real gun, right? A Star mm. Wars gun. Yeah, but you haven't shot a real gun yet. Um. You're a little too little, to, a little too young to be shooting guns yet. Yeah, not like that one, but you're bigger to. You can shoot one, right? All right. I you can. can yeah, I can shoot guns if I want to shoot. Have I shot a gun before? Yeah. Yeah. Where did you shot one? A lot of places, bud. What? A lot of places. Most of my gun shooting happened with birds. Well, when I, birds was a big kid, when I was a big kid, I shot that gun. When I was a big kid. Which gun did you shoot? Uh, when, that one, when I was old, you shoot that one. And I just shot it. That was just what? Put a little wax on it. 